Now let's talk about how to extend the latent factor model to include user and item biases to further improve accuracy. Remember, in a collaborative filtering approach, we have been able to extend this method to include both user bias and movie bias. And so in the end, the final collaborative filtering method we have actually has three terms. We have the user bias, which is the uh, BX here. And we also have the movie bias, which is the BI here. And finally, we have the user movie interaction term, which is here. And we can extend the latent factor model the same way. And concretely, we can predict the rating from user X to item I using this equation. Basically, it's the sum of four terms. And we have the overall ratings. So this is the global ratings among all the users to all the movies, which is mu, plus the user bias, BX, plus the movie bias, BI. And finally, we have the same old user movie interaction term. And this is the inner product between the user latent factors and the item latent factors. For example, let's say that we have the mean rating. This is a global mean rating of mu equals to 3.7. And you are a critical reviewer, so your ratings are one star lower than the mean. So it's BX equals to minus one here. And the Star Wars actually gets a mean rating of 0 0.5 higher than average movie. So BY, BI is actually positive 0 0.5. Therefore, the predicted rating for you on Star Wars, if we consider only the first three terms, is 3.7 minus one plus 0 0.5, which is 3.2. And basically, to learn this model, as always, we can pose it as an optimization problem. And we will try to find the BQMP such that it can minimize this whole objective function. And here we have four terms. The first term is the error term. We can see that these for small terms, actually, it's the predicted ratings from user i, uh, from user x to movie i, and this is the ground truth rating. So this is the error term to measure the goodness of fit. And the last four terms are the regularization terms. So this is the term for the uh, uh, movie data factors. This is the term for the user data factors, and these last two terms regularize the bias terms. So basically, we have also these lambdas, which are hyperparameters. And you can either manually set these hyperparameters, or you can search these lambdas via grid search. And as always, we can use gradient descent to find the parameters. And note that here, both the biases, Bx and Bi, and the interaction, or the latent factors, Px and Qi, they are all treated as parameters and we're trying to estimate them by minimizing this objective function in the training data set. Let's see how we do. So this is the performance of various methods. If we use the collaborative filtering method with the user and item biases, we are around here. And if we use the basic data factor models, we are we're actually already outperforming the collaborative filtering approach. And if we extend it further with the user and item biases, we can do even much, much better and bring the IMSC down to here. And interestingly, we can see that the x-axis represents the number of parameters we need, right? And at this point, we're actually already having uh, 100 million uh, of, of parameters. And this is actually around the same number of the ratings that we have. So this is kind of crazy, right? Because we have almost the same number of parameters as the data. But thanks to our regularization term, 
at this point, the model is still not overfitting. And to summarize, we are currently here, and if we use the basic collaborative filtering, it gives us 0.94 of ISD. If we include the biases, we can get 0.91, and the latent factor model bring down the RMSE a little bit, gives us 0.9. And if we extend it with the biases, we can get even better. We can have a RMSE of 0.89. So what can we do now to further perform, uh, further, further improve the performance? One thing we can do is to consider the time factors. And the observation is that if you, if you look at the average ratings of all the movies over time, it's actually increasing. So it's kind of interesting that people tend to like the movie as, as time goes by. And based on this observation, we can actually add the time dependence to the biases term. So basically, we will make the parameters bf and bi to depend on time. So we will uh, parameterize this time dependence by linear trend. And each bin actually corresponds, for example, we can make each bin uh, correspond to 10 consecutive days. And let's say that we are in the second bin, then um, if this rating happens in the second bin, which is like the rating happens between the 10th week and the 20th week, then the bias term for this particular movie I, which is bi of two actually equals to bi plus two times delta i. And this bi and delta i, they can all be learned uh, by optimizing some objective function. And we can, actually further add a temporal dependency to the factors too. For example, we can add the temporal dependency to the user factors such that this Px actually also depends on time. And we could do similar stuff to use the bin-based approach. And how are we doing so far? And remember that with the biases, we can get the performance of 0.89. And if we add the time factors into the model, you can actually do much, much better. We can, we can get an RMSC of 0.876. But still we're one step away from the grand prize. Uh, at this point, you might get desperate and you, you might try a kitchen sink approach or, or what we call an ensemble approach. And this is actually exactly what the winning team did at the time. And they actually used a pool of about 100 methods and they combined the predictions of all these 100 methods. Basically, you can think of it as the average of all of their predictions. And again, finally get a 10% uh, improvement over the Netflix in-house model. We can see that in the leaderboard actually, uh, outperform this, uh, this goal. And a few months later, they're able to get this $1 million track. And from here, we can actually see that the clean methods are actually the basis, but sometimes in able to go through, to get you through the last mile, you might need an ensemble approach, basically to combine all the, all the basic methods that you have to further improve the results. And up until this point, and nowadays uh, the industry is actually still using some version of the latent factor models, or we can say that it's their deep learning versions. And we will talk briefly about these in the next lecture.